Hey, Jody here. Thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This video is a review of the Miller Multimatic 220 ACDC. So this is a multi-process machine that will also do TIG AC. This is part one where I'm going to test out the TIG function only, but I'm going at this with the perspective of would this machine fit the bill to start a side hustle with? And I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video after we get into the arc shots and the review of low end and high end on DC and on AC. Let's do it. I tested the low end on DC using box cutter blades and for the high end I just did a quarter inch thick uh, cold rolled steel fillet weld. The low end on AC on an edge weld on some 16 gauge and the high end on AC quarter inch thick lap joint. To test the pulser capabilities, I did an outside corner on 16 gauge stainless steel. So I'm not much for unboxing videos, so I won't make you go through that. You can just go online or look at this picture for a while and see what all comes with this. Two flow meters, I found that interesting because you can hook up two bottles at the same time and just with the tap of a switch or the foot pedal, you can switch processes without having to reconfigure. It is a dual voltage machine using this adapter here. It's got two inlets, one for MIG gas, one for TIG gas. Like I said, you can, you can leave them hooked up with a two-bottle setup and never have to swap anything. Just tap the pedal, tap the trigger on the MIG gun, and then you can just change processes really quickly. So if you've got a lot of different jobs coming in throughout the day, this might be something of interest to you. By the way, this hell hook is so handy for hanging your helmet and wrenches and things like that. All right, we're going to hook up the gas here. And I'm going to hook it right in there and, and give it a little quick snug. This is the TIG uh, accessory kit that comes with the TIG torch. This is an air-cooled 17-style TIG torch with a 25 gas through den. So the gas comes right through the dens there. There's no additional argon hose that plugs into the front of the machine. Once you hook up the ground, that's all you have to do. You never have to switch polarities by swapping the cables around or swapping the dens connectors around. Foot pedal is, is a nice Miller foot pedal, one of the nicer ones. I, I really like it. And again, they, they supply two flow meters so that you can hook up two bottles of gas and get the, get the most out of this machine. All right, this is the torch that came with it. It's got a 10N style TIG cup. Number seven is on there right now. Nothing wrong with these. Uh, I just have become so used to using a small torch, uh, like a, a water-cooled 20 or an air-cooled 9, that I like the shorter cups. So I'm going to change it for the sake of filming to a clear number eight Pro Furic cup, and that'll help you. It'll help us both to see the arc better, actually, as I film this. So this is a really quick video of me swapping over here sped up like eight times or or more comes in a pack of four put it in there moisten the o-ring slip it on there and i'm ready to go now i'm going to weld box cutter blades first so i'm using a 332 electrode for this whole video for welding box cutter blades i sharpen it like a needle like that to get the the best arc start possible i really should go with a 1 16th electrode for these but i know a lot of people will just use a 332 electrode in fact most of what i do I just keep a 332 electrode in the machine all the time. So running through the menu here, you can see you can just select your different processes. I'm going to go down to TIG Steel. And this is, again, this applies to where you don't have to change the polarity. It just selects the polarity for you as you select the process. It's got pulse capability. I'm not going to use it right now. Up to 150 pulses a second. I'm going to be using about 25 amps for this box cutter blade. And I just did that in the manual setting function, but another way to do that is to press this button here that takes you into the auto set, where you basically just select your material thickness, and that bumps your amperage down accordingly. So if I go all the way down to the 22 gauge, it's as low as it goes on the auto set. It takes me down to 35 amps, but I, I, want to, I want to set it at 25 amps. I know that it's not going to take much more than that, or it won't take any more than that to weld this thing because it's 25 thousandths, but it's got that razor edge on it. So I had to use a little finesse on this. I had to like leave a little bit of wire lipped over the corner and melt that to keep from nipping the edge. It's got a little bit of a snappy start on DC. So you won't be, you won't be wanting to use this machine on 20 thousandths or below. It's going to be a little bit, a little bit crisp on the start for that. 
the specs on the machine say from 20 amps to 210 amps. But I was able to weld the box cutter blade here without, you know, this is the first shot, first try. I didn't have to do a bunch of them. So in order to test the, the higher amperage DC, I just did a quarter inch thick T-joint. And I just used the auto set function. It took me up to 190 amps. I didn't quite use all of that using the foot pedal here. And so this is, again, this I didn't expect to see anything crazy here. Almost every machine has a nice DC current at higher amperage like this. And this is no exception. Nice smooth arc. And you can see that Furic 8 cup really lighting the way, showing me where I'm going. It really helps as, as I'm, you know, I'm not a young man anymore. Helps me see where I'm going. No surprises there. Nice smooth arc. Now to test the low end on the AC, I'm going to light up on the edge of 063 aluminum. So I go to TIG aluminum here. It reminds me on where to plug my ground in there. And I can use the auto set here, but that only takes me down to 95 amps on 16 gauge. And I know that's going to be way too much for the edge weld, so I keep bumping it down. And I go down, I'll just use the auto set and bump it down to 30 amps, and that should be enough to run a bead on the edge. But I want more than that, so I take it into manual, and I want to set the frequency up a little bit higher. I want the arc to be focused. So on an edge, you want a focused arc. 150 frequency is going to work a lot better. And I bump the amperage here down uh, manually to 30, and then I left uh, the cleaning, the AC balance, on 69%. 69% EN. I sharpened the tip just as if I would weld steel. And you can see I lit up there without even nipping the edge. That's a good thing. I did find that by setting the electrode size to 1 16th instead of the 332 that I was using, it changed the arc start characteristics and gave me a, a lot softer start. It seemed to make more difference on the AC than it did on the DC. But I was able to run a bead on the edge there, no problem. Next up, to test the high end, quarter inch thick lap joint. Okay, so if I leave that alone using the auto set, it defaults to the pro settings. So about 75% EN and 120. But I'm going to 77 on the frequency and 70% on the EN and 210 amps. I want to do it manually. I prefer lower frequencies for thicker metal like this. So I had no trouble. I wasn't quite full pedal. At, time, at the very beginning I was, but then I had to back off. So it had enough power to do this quarter inch thick lap joint. No problem. The last thing I checked was the pulser function on stainless steel outside corner joint 16 gauge. I, I like one and a half pulses a second for little fusion joints like this. This is, comes in really handy for food service work, for kitchen stainless steel stuff. One and a half pulses a second. Now on this machine, the other parameters like background current and pulse time on are fixed. I use 70 amps. And the reason for that second tack here is if you just have one tack on the very end, you might melt it and things pop loose if it's under stress. So this setting, it appeared to me to be about 25 to 30% on the background current. And that's about what I would have set it at for this. Although there are so many applications, I really like to set my own. So I would prefer that it had its own uh, free ability to set background and pulse time on. But this is a good all-around setting. Pulse is super useful for thin stainless steel like this for kitchen work and food service work. All right, here's the reason I here's the reason I went at it from this perspective, because I started my side hustle. I bought a machine back around 1993, Synchrowave 250, and, I, and the reason I bought it, I was moonlighting at a at a fab shop and not making much money. I got this opportunity to do some work if I had my own machine where I could make four times as much money and be in my own shop. So that was a no-brainer. So I did that, and then I, I got some work from another machine shop, and then another machine shop, and then another machine shop, to the point that it was about all I could take care of in addition to my day job. And so I remember the jobs that I got in. Most of it was carbon steel, stainless steel, and aluminum. Most of it was pretty thick, but some of it, occasionally I'd get a really thin job. And, uh, okay, would this machine have handled everything that I did over those years? starting with that Synchro Wave 250, then a Dynasty 200, and borrowing a MIG welder from a friend, a machinist friend. And uh, the answer is almost. There's one job that I can think of that I would not have wanted to do with this machine. A little snappy on the DC starts. And that was a 20 thousandths thick beverage container, stainless steel. And it had to be purged and everything. 
doing the tack welds on that, the fit up had to be just right. You couldn't have any overlap, mismatch, or anything like that. Uh, this machine might have nipped those edges a little bit too much to handle that. So uh, I'd say, I'd say the answer to the question: Yes, you could absolutely start a side hustle with this machine. I'll get into the uh, the MIG, the stick, the flux core stuff like that in future videos. I hope this helps. I try, I try to give an honest review. Uh, you, if you get below what it's rated at, which is 24 gauge as the minimum, it's a little bit hot on the starts. That's it. Um, all right, we'll get into it deeper as we go. I hope this helps. See you next time. Just a reminder that these videos are brought to you by my online store at weldmonger.com. You can shop for TIG fingers, TIG cups, TIG torches, and a whole lot more. New products being added all the time. Thanks for your support.